Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. I previously did a video where I showed you how you can link channel controls using um, the Logic environment, um, but the environment is a bit of a, a weird place to go. It's not a very uh, intuitive place to kind of navigate around. Um, and I was discussing it with um, some people online, and there is uh, a better way that you can actually do it using the smart controls. Um, so I had someone who watched that previous video ask me how you can do this. So I just wanted to do a quick video um, showing you how you can use the smart controls to link parameters in Logic. All right, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit like. Let's check it out. So what we want to do here then is um, select all our channels. We're going to create a um, a stack. So um, create a track stack. I'm just going to do it for a, a summing stack. So here we've got our sum. Okay, I'm just going to call that um, vox. Let's call it vox stack. That's fine. Um, so... In this particular instance that the person has asked me, it was um, Waves Tune, like a tuning algorithm pr uh, plugin. I don't have that, but um, I'm just going to use the uh, the standard logic kind of tuning stuff. Um, where are we? Let's look at pitch. Now I'm using a um, a new trackball, so I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit rusty on this. I'm I'm trying to get used to it, but it's uh, it's a bit crazy. So what we've got here then is we've got the pitch correction plugin, and um, the the viewer he wanted to see how we could change the key. So if we could change it from um, A for one song, and then just turn one dial and change it to C for the next song. Let's have a look how we can do that then. So our smart controls, what we can do is just press B and it will bring up these smart controls here. Now typically we can bring up smart controls for um, this track, this track, this track, whatever we want to do. Um, and we can assign certain smart controls by clicking the I, the info over here. So if we wanted this parameter, um, the one that's got blue around it to be, I don't know, um, let's say we wanted that to be... Uh, go to A as the key, then we could just select that as A and we, we could we could turn that to make it go to A. Um, but let's have a look at something that's going to be a bit more intuitive here then. So let's go for um, root note. And once we turn this plugin, we can then make it so that on the plugin over here, it changes the root note. I'll just have to go to a scale first. So that's going to change the root note from C up to C sharp, etc. But that's not what the person's asked. They've not asked how we do it on one. We want to do it on all four at the same time. So what we have to do is we have to go a bit of a weird way around it, um, to be honest, because initially you would have thought that if you have that plugin on all um, on all four channels, then if you just go to your stack, you can just select it there. But it's not actually there. Strangely enough, you have to insert a plugin first, and only then do you get the option to do all of them, which is a, a, a bit of a bizarre one. Um, but let's have a look at this. So on the Vox Stack channel, we've got our smart controls down here. We've inserted a plugin, which we're not actually going to use. We just needs that to kind of register the fact that it's using plugins. Weird. Um, so first off then, the first one we're going to do is we're going to go to Vox 1, which is the first channel up here. We're going to go to Vox 1, Pitch Correction, Root Note. Then we're going to go to the Cog, Add Mapping, Vox 2, pitch correction, root note. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Vox 3, pitch correction, root note. Add mapping. And then Vox 4, pitch correction, root note. So it's this one that is in blue. And this is the one that is going to uh, control all of them. So as I turn this up, that is going to affect it on all of them. And let's just open all those plugins up just so we can see that for sure. So let's, that's the first one. That's the second one. That's the third one. And this is the fourth one. Now, one thing you do have to do on this um, logic pitch correction, um, which I had to do in the first instance, is you have to change it from uh, chromatic to major scale or some kind of scale, because otherwise it doesn't really matter what the root note is. If it's chromatic, then it's, it's not, you know, it's just every note, isn't it? It's not one particular note. So we've got Vox 1, 2, 3, and 4 open. You can see the root notes on all of them. Let's go to our track stack. Let's change that root note button, uh, control, excuse me, and we can see that that is changing it on absolutely all of them. Now, it's um, lagging behind on one of them because I'd already changed that one, hadn't I? So if we change that one to C sharp, then we should get it right. Okay, so you can see that they're now going. So what you need to do in the first instance is um, if you turn this root note down, turn that down to um, C to start off with. Um, and if we make sure they are all indeed on C, um, 
and then it, it'll, it'll track properly. But you can do this with any kind of plugin at all. You can do this with a compressor, with an EQ. Um, in this instance, it was pitch correction because um, the person wanted to do it on um, a live vocal and four four vocals at once. Um, but that's a nice, simple way of doing it. So all you do is create a track stack using those uh, four vocals there. It could be five, it could be ten. Um, and then over on the um, smart controls, you press B to bring up your smart controls. And then on your track stack, you have to insert a plugin first. You don't have to use it. It just has to be there for whatever reason. And then you can change uh, whatever you want it to be. So on these arrows here, you can make it whatever you want. You can make it Vox 3, use F sharp, whatever you want. And it's always the one that is colored in blue. And that will always turn around. You can add new mapping by clicking the clock cog and saying add new mapping. All right, so that's going to be um, useful for that one person, but I hope that some, some others of you um, have been trying to do this and this is kind of answering a question for you because smart controls are really useful. Um, they are, as they say, they're a smart way of getting to a lot of parameters at once and that's kind of a bit of a, a shortcut to controlling a load of parameters that's quicker than the way I showed you before um, in the environment. All right, thanks a lot. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit like. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.